everybody to step back three feet, please. There'll be plenty of time. Could everybody step back three feet because we don't want people up front crushed. If everybody could please step back three feet, we'd appreciate that. of thousands of Portlanders who've come out to demonstrate in support of racial justice and equity. I want to thank the thousands of you who've come out to oppose the Trump administration's occupation of our city. It is an unconstitutional occupation. The tactics that are being used by our federal officers are abhorrent. They do not act with probable cause. People are not being told who they are being arrested by, and they're being denied basic constitutional rights. The reason the, the reason this is important is because it's not just happening in Portland. And the president has made it clear it's going to happen in cities that are controlled by Democratic leaders. That is a use of police force, federal police force, for political ends. That is not an acceptable solution anywhere in America. And we need, we are on the front line here in Portland. If, it, if we are not able to get the federal administration to back off and leave our city, it will happen all across the United States, jeopardizing our United States Constitution. With regard to the local police, because I'm not shirking that responsibility either, we have heard you. You've asked for reforms. We passed historic reforms. We reduced the budget. And we're starting next week on the big work, which is reforming the oversight and accountability system, which I've committed to work with my colleagues to do. I know for many of you that's not enough, and I respect that, and I understand that. You're all entitled to your opinion, and the reason I wanted to be here tonight was not to talk, but to listen. And so with that, we'll allow you to take the microphone, and I will listen. Oh, Ted Wheeler, I'm a medic. I am a medic. The federal agent shot at my head while I was trying to help a man who was bleeding out on the corner. Where were the cops to defend us? Where were your officers to protect me? Someone who's here to save lives. 
come through. Where were they? Where were they to protect us? Where were you to keep your safe? Goodness gracious, I get the microphone. Hello, people. Those of you who are on Facebook Live, me, I'm here with Ted Beeler, and we're going to ask some poignant questions about the changes that we need to. to uh, to do in our city. So let, let's talk to Mr. Wheeler. Um, so Mr. Wheeler, everyone in the crowd wants to know what you're going to do about qualified immunity. Uh, go ahead and answer that. I am opposed to qualified immunity. We're going to get rid of it. To do it, we have to work with our state legislature to do it. I'm 100% committed to getting rid of qualified immunity. Okay, okay. He says, he's 100% percent asked when. I'm hoping it will come up in the next special legislative session, which is scheduled in the next couple of weeks. But I, I, I believe uh, today. Good. Thank you. Yeah, those of you who got your ballot today, um, understand that Mr. Wheeler has committed to getting rid of qualified immunity for police. Um, so we do have to hold his feet to the fire and make sure that we hold him accountable for what he has committed to do. Next question. Um, you say that the feds are doing all of this illegal activity, and we see it. We see the we see our First Amendment rights being denied. We see our Fourth Amendment rights being trampled on. Um, this happened before the feds got here. We've been having our Fourth Amendment rights trampled my entire life. I'm a 43-year-old man. I, I was here during the uh, the choke 'em, don't smoke 'em T-shirts. I, I remember that. I was a fr I'm a friend of James Perez, who died 97 seconds after he was stopped by police. We've been having our rights trampled before the feds came. Under your watch, what do you plan on doing about our rights? And just look, look, look at these people. They're here for a reason. They want to know what you're going to do to protect our rights because they're not being protected. There, there is no question that we here in Portland. And I will say, we, as police commissioner, I'm not going to make this about other people, we have been too slow to acknowledge both the systematic racism and the injustice of the police system, but also the education system, the economic system, access to housing, access to health care. And what you're seeing around you is a referendum on where America is today with regard to racial justice and what people are saying overwhelmingly is it has not worked, it is broken, and we need to fundamentally reform the system. And so I will continue to work with my colleagues on the City Council. We passed historic reforms. We've directed resources from the Police Bureau back into the community. We are in the process of overhauling the oversight and accountability system. But it starts with who we hire. We need more diversity in our hiring, how we train officers, and how we hold officers accountable. And uh, all of those things are already in process with our colleagues. It came, it came 40 years too late. I, I cannot argue that point. It's come 400 years too late. 
Uh, my last question before I pass the microphone um, is, I got you, is uh, we've seen uh, our local police department working in conjunction, in conjunction, and multiple people have witnessed that they've worked in conjunction with groups like the Proud Boys. What do you have to say about that? If there was ever any solid proof that they were working with the Proud Boys or any other organization, it would be appalling to me personally, and there would be discipline. Now, I want to be clear. Um, that have constitu people's constitutional rights, but I don't want police officers taking sides politically. They have to be content neutral and agnostic to what the politics of the moment are. It gets very dangerous when policing becomes politicized, and that's what Donald Trump is doing with his federal troops when he says, I'm only sending them into cities that are controlled by Democrat Democratic mayors. That is politicization of the police force, and it's not acceptable, and it is unconstitutional. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do, I do have a question for you as well, Mr. Mayor. Um, before you, I had spoken to your predecessor. Sorry, I thought this was going to be a list, so I should not be doing it. No, well, we have questions, and, and you are the only man that has the answers, and we're hoping that your answers are what we are hoping to hear. I had spoken to your predecessor after the first time I had to hold up a sign that said, I can't breathe, in honor of another black man strangled by police. And I talked to your predecessor, who confirmed to me that when this president, who is now our current president, whether or not we agree or not, would enforce stop and frisk in this city, he guaranteed me that he would not. I think we've now gone even past stop and frisk to having federal officers unidentified on the streets pulling off civilians, which is even worse than at least having a badge and a name that I can identify to. Is there anything within our local government and state government to be able to stop having these federal officers or to protect us against them, seeing that they are now the instigators? You yourself have said this on multiple news channels, CNN, MSNBC, that you agree that we this had calmed down. We were working with the city. This is now obviously brought out not just mothers, not just people of all races and colors, ages, but it's bringing, making a lot of people very angry. What can you say that you are going to do to protect us against them? So the first thing that I am doing to protect us is I am doing everything in my power to get them to leave. And what that means specifically is I have been raising the alarm nationally. I've been on national TV shows talking to people about what is happening in this city and that they cannot be passive and sit back and watch it in Portland because it will come to a city near them next. The next thing we're doing is using the tools of the law. Our state attorney general, our city attorneys, they're looking at every legal action available in our state attorney. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there even with that because this is the same party line that you've been toting the last couple of days. But this is what you've been telling. But the issue is that those are words. What is the action? What are you going to do tonight when we have unidentified federal officers on the streets hurting your civilians, hurting your citizens, the people that elected you? What are you going to do about this? And if there isn't something that you can't do, can you say that, that there is nothing you can't do? Because anything that goes through legislation, anything that goes through a lawsuit through our attorney general will take months, if not years, to be held up. I believe the fastest path is what we are pursuing, which is we're working with our United States Senators and our congressmen, Congress, uh, congressional delegation. They control the money. They control the paychecks. They control the power of the purse. That's probably the fastest tool we have other than the legal other than the legal actions that our state attorney general is taking, which I strongly support. And then, of course, just bringing global attention, bringing global attention to this issue. So you're saying that tonight there is nothing you can do to protect these thousands of people around us immediately from the federal officers in our city. There's nothing immediately that you can do to protect us. I, I think what we are doing tonight is actually the best thing we can do right now is be here, be heard, be unified, and be clear. We didn't want them. We didn't ask for them. They are not trained for what they are being asked to do, and we want them to leave. Thank you, Mr.
Hey, Mayor Wheeler. Mayor Wheeler. My name is Simab Husseini. I'm with the Council on American Islamic Relations, Oregon chapter. And the question I have is that the precedent for how we've been treated as protesters night after night for the past 55 days has been already laid by Portland Police Bureau and how they've treated us. So the only thing that we're getting from the, F from the federal agents is an escalation. And Time. The whole protest and all beyond. We're here protesting for Kwame's Hayes. We're here protesting for all the lives that have been lost at the hands of PPB. So the federal thing to me is just gaslighting. That's not as important as what's actually happening. The systemic, the systemic violence that black lives have been facing and that all of us are here trying to say black lives matter. It's a statistical expression. So what are you going to commit to outside of the 15 million that you guys started with, which is not enough? What are you going to commit to between now and through your campaign? And if you make it past your campaign, what are you going to commit to as far as substantial changes in law enforcement and as well as regulating the PPA? The PPA? Because Dale Turner is clearly taking over as commissioner over your duties for the last 55 days up until Trump came. So, first of all, I cannot regulate Daryl Turner. He's a union official. There's nothing I can do to discipline a union official. Let, let me just answer the question. Let me let me answer the question. Uh, Daryl and I have had our public disagreements. And when he says something that I disagree with, I call him out. He certainly feels free to call me out, and he most certainly has. The second thing that I would tell you is with regard to munitions, I do not like the deployment of crowd control munitions generally because they tend to be indiscriminate. If I am committing a criminal act and you are not, and we're standing in close proximity, the munition doesn't know the difference. And so I called for restrictions on those munitions. All of them are up for review. Uh, the special session of the legislature is looking at them. And tactics, absolutely. And I have asked the police bureau to do two things. I have asked them to de-escalate the situation and when they make arrests, make sure they are people who are specifically engaged in illegal activity.